Hello, Pisces. Welcome to your July Astrological Insights Forecast. I am your astrologer, Maria de Simone. Let's get started. I'm leaving for Italy. I'm going on vacation, which means I'm trying to get all of your forecasts finished early. I'm starting a timer. This is five minutes or less, and I'm getting to the point of your astrology for July. Let's go. A new moon on July 5th occurs in your fifth house, Pisces. And when I tell you this new moon is absolutely perfect and stunning, one of the best of 2024, you've got to take advantage of it. If you're single and looking for love, open for love, ready for love, this lunation is going to help you. You're going to make a connection quite possibly that is very heart centered, that feels like home, that is just, that, that makes you feel safe to nurture. So it's really beautiful. If you're already in a relationship, then you and your sweetheart are just going to have so many pleasurable moments because of this new moon energy. It is making just glorious aspects. It could be a fertility lunation for some of you where, where you'll be getting pregnant. If you already have a child, there could be some news or something new that your child is pursuing depending on their age, and it's very positive. Then we've got Venus entering Leo on July 11th until August 4th, Leo is your sixth house. So Venus here means that you're going to be collaborating with your colleagues on work assignments in a very easy, harmonious way. It is also possible that an office romance is getting off the ground. So the, the love transits, let me tell you, if you're single, be open for anything because the Venus going here can direct the love energy to a colleague, to a work situation, or meeting someone at the gym or at a doctor's office or, you know, while you're doing something to take care of your health, that could definitely be the case as well. It is, you're loving your work, you're loving your job, whatever projects you're working on are just very harmonious with Venus being here. And then we've got a Mars-Uranus conjunction on July 15th at 26 degrees of Taurus. And for you, this is probably not going to be a worst case scenario situation, but I will mention that it does fall in your third house and that could bring some kind of sudden argument between you and a sibling, or you may find out that your sibling has an unexpected accident or situation to deal with. It's also possible if you're rushing, you know, the third house is your neighborhood. You might be jogging around your neighborhood or you may be, you know, driving in your neighborhood and there may be some kind of a minor accident or minor inconvenience that just really rubs you the wrong way. So just take things in stride, try to be calm and not, you know, get things out of context. This could be used very well and very wisely for a communications project that involves the internet or technology. So you could be really motivated to like launch a podcast, for example, or YouTube videos or YouTube channel. That would be great, a great way to use this energy. So I encourage that. Then Mars enters Gemini on July 20th and moves into your fourth house. Mars in the fourth house can be very confrontational and touchy with family dynamics. A family member may have an anger management problem, or there could be some conflict brewing between you and a relative, and if so, it's going to come out during this time period. What I like to tell people to do during a Mars fourth house transit is, you know, get out the hammer and nails and do a project around the house. I'm not handy, personally, but um, even if you just get out your knives and cook, okay, do something that is abrasive and aggressive, take it out on the household, do it in a constructive way. So cooking, um, building something in your house, a construction project, a renovation project, a backyard landscaping project, any of that, really good idea, really positive way to use the Mars energy. Your patience with family will be shorter than usual. So be aware of that. Then we end the month with a full moon in Capricorn, and this is the second full moon in Capricorn in a row. Back in June, you had one, and it was a difficult one. But this one is easy, breezy, beautiful. So it falls in your 11th house of friendships, and now you're having fulfillment. Whatever tough choices you made regarding your social life or a friend and your role in an organization, whatever happened that was difficult, now with this full moon, you're getting the reward and the sense of peace with your decision or with the outcome of that situation. That's a really nice way to end the month. 
all will be well in your social life. And the 11th house also rules your greatest hopes, wishes, and dreams. And it is possible that you are having a fulfillment of one of your greatest aspirations as the month comes to a close. Happy July, guys. I will see you in August.